What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and today we have a bunch of awesome new Destiny 2 information pertaining to the upcoming Forsaken expansion. Now before we get started guys, I'm giving away one billion V-Bucks. All you gotta do is like the video, share the video, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let's get started right away here with uh, something, I think that's the highlight for today's video, a brand new exotic auto rifle coming in the Forsaken expansion that has been revealed revealed via Game Informer. Now, Game Informer has an exclusive deal with Bungie, with Destiny, so for the next month, they're going to be having exclusive content coming out on their site. Um, definitely check them out, link down below. But today, they talked about this brand new exotic auto rifle. Now, this exotic auto rifle we have seen before. In fact, you know, I did a video showcasing all the exotics I could spot within the original Forsaken Reveal trailer, and this was one of them. It comes in the scene where you see the three Guardians kind of back to back to back, and the Titan is wielding this very chunky, thick looking auto rifle right here with four barrels. Now, most auto rifles do not have four barrels, so that was a tip right away that this would be exotic. Now, there was kind of some question about, well, what is this going to do, right? What are its four barrels? Are they shooting one bullet of each different element? Is it going to shoot really, really, really fast? Well, today we actually know what it does. This weapon is called the Cerberus Plus One. It's built by a guardian called Jezza, Jeopardy, Verlaine, and it uses a mysterious power source called the Photonic Heart to actually make this weapon work. And you can kind of see this power source taped, if you will, to the side of the gun. And this gun looks thrown together last minute because it literally was. This Guardian crash landed on the Tangled Shore, had other plans for the heart, this power source, but had to strap together this weapon. Frankly, you use flex tape, that's what you get. And <laughs> moving on from there, what does this weapon actually do? Sounds cool, love the backstory. A lot of the Destiny exotics have really sweet backstories, but what is its exotic perk? Well, it's spread fire. Apparently, with this gun, it isn't firing one barrel at a time. When you press the trigger, it's firing all the barrels at once. So you're getting a lot of damage numbers. But of course, it does have this spread that you do have to deal with. Now, initially, I heard this and I thought, well, this is going to be the close range auto rifle of choice. Just hip fire down everything. And while you can definitely still do that, Bungie was also saying that this weapon has actually pretty even damage numbers across all ranges. Like, it actually carries its damage out to farther ranges. So potentially you could use this weapon in a medium or even slightly longer range engagement. So while this gun is most at home up close and sandbox design lead Josh Hamrick says, it's not really a gun you aim, you just point and try to get close. So it's just melting enemies close range. One of its exotic perks is the spread shot package perk. And this focuses the spread while you're aiming down sights, making it more versatile against lone distant enemies. So again, even though it's a fantastic weapon just spraying bullets up close, it does have some perks that let it function at more medium or longer ranges. This is sounding like a pretty versatile weapon. It's also apparently quite useful for airborne encounters because it's hard to miss. Anyways, that is the Cerberus Plus One, the new exotic coming in Forsaken. Actually sounds pretty sweet. I definitely want to try it out. And if it's shooting all four barrels at once and doing decent damage, this thing could shred in the Crucible up close. Like I really want to see how it does. Now, moving on from there, let's talk about the Scorn, the new enemy faction coming in Forsaken. So, the Scorn were once fallen, but they've been corrupted, and after repeated reanimations, they've been mutilated, and they were locked in the darkest, deepest parts of the Prison of Elders before the prison break. Now they're loose and causing havoc. Now, something interesting about just the AI of this enemy is that apparently they're the most aggressive enemy faction. Like, they will just charge you, they will try to melee you, they'll come right for you. Which, you know, is sometimes gonna make encounters easier. I mean, if you have a sweet business and everyone's charging at you, you just hold the trigger. But at the same time, if you're low health, that's the last thing you want enemies to do. Now, there's a bunch of different types of Scorn enemies. There's Mongrels, and they tower over the battlefield, blasting out cascades of lightning that are near impossible to dodge. 
That sounds exactly as annoying as hobgoblins. After that, we have the arachnid-like Screeb. They scramble on all fours and explode like cursed thralls, but only bigger. After that, we have raiders. Now, they send out explosive spinning saw blades of void energy, and they can teleport. Next up, we have lurkers. They carry small shields, which block shots until they're hit in the legs. And then we have ravengers. Now, these are the ones that you've seen in the promotional pictures with the spinning lanterns of flame. So they will run around spinning those lanterns, and they slam them into the ground, create a spout of solar flame, but you can actually shoot the lanterns and put them out, which is really sweet. And lastly, we have chieftains. These are the big captain-like enemy types in a group of adds. They're going to be a little bit harder to kill and so on. And they will actually throw out one of three elemental totems. They have solar totems, which is basically a dangerous spinning turret of flame. So just going to damage you if you get near it. Then they have void totems. This gives shields to nearby enemies, so it's going to make that group of adds harder to kill. Lastly, there is arc totems, and those attract the guardian to the totem center, leaving them unable to move away until it's destroyed. So, black hole totems, essentially, that will drag you to the middle. Wormhole Threshers from Borderlands 2, anybody? And that actually sounds really sweet, that these chieftains will throw out a random total during a battle. So if you're fighting the same group of enemies, if you're doing the same encounter you've already done, depending on what totem the chieftain throws out, that's going to change that encounter. That's going to make that encounter a little bit different. And that's exactly what you want for replayability. And moving on, the last thing we're going to talk about is some very helpful and clarifying information about the weapon slot changes coming in Forsaken. The weapon slot changes are probably the biggest overall, or at least one of the biggest overall changes coming with this new expansion. And the great part is that it's going to be for all players. You don't have to spend a dime on Forsaken and you're still going to get these big weapon slot changes, which is absolutely awesome. So essentially what they're doing is giving you a lot more freedom than you have now because right now you have a primary weapon in your kinetic slot and then a primary weapon in your energy slot that just has an energy damage type and then you have power weapons which is pretty much everything else. With the new weapon slot system, the special weapons from Destiny 1, sniper rifles and so on, are going to be available to use in the kinetic and energy slot. But how is that going to work? What are all the weapons in these categories? How does ammunition work? Well, here's what happens. So, there are three different types of ammunition with this new weapon slot system. And what type of ammo your weapon uses doesn't depend on what slot it's in, but rather depends on what type of gun it is. So, for primary and secondary weapons using white, essentially kinetic ammo, this is going to be auto rifles, bows, hand cannons, pulse rifles, scout rifles, sidearms, and SMGs. So this is kind of your primary weapons from Destiny 1. White ammo is going to be the most abundant and these are the weapons that use it to reload. So it doesn't matter if you have a energy pulse rifle in that energy slot, it will still use that white primary ammunition. Moving on from there, the secondary green ammunition is going to be for breech loaded grenade launchers, fusion rifles, shotguns, sniper rifles, and trace rifles. This is probably the biggest overall changes. These weapons using green ammunition essentially are being moved out of the power weapon category and are essentially becoming special weapons just like in Destiny 1, but you can use them in the kinetic slot and you can use two of these at the same time. Some big changes here. Breach loaded grenade launchers. So all those grenade launchers that you just reload that one shot, those are all going to be available to use in the energy and kinetic slot. That's big because the fighting lion, the reason it was exotic is because it was able to be used in that energy slot. So I don't know what they're going to do with that. But this also does confirm that fusion rifles are going to be usable in that maybe kinetic, but probably just energy weapon slot. And then the power weapons that use the purple power ammo are drum-loaded grenade launchers, linear fusion rifles, 
rocket launchers, and swords. I think the move of linear fusion rifles down to a dedicated heavy weapon is really, really interesting. Remember, those weapons we just named, you cannot use them outside of that power weapon slot. They're still power heavy weapons. So linear fusion rifles are likely going to get a pretty big PvE buff to compensate for that because sniper rifles you can use in the other slots. Linear is like, we're talking probably sleeper simulant-esque, turning the tarantula and other weapons like that more similar to that heavy weapon roll. Alright guys, now that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. And if you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.